Hey Guitar Heroes, uh, welcome back to Clone Hero Lessons. It's time we take a look at 12 Patterns of Christmas, as well as 12 Cluster Fs of Christmas. So uh, I was meaning to do this video two years ago, and then I forgot. And then I was going to do it last year, and then I forgot again. But, so now that I'm thinking about it, let's just get into it. So um, this is, uh, for those who haven't heard of the 12 Patterns of Christmas, it's, it's structured the same way as the 12 Days of Christmas, how it plays Pattern 1. And then it plays pattern two, and then pattern one, and then three, two, one, and then four, two, four, three, two, one, and you know, so so pattern one you play twelve times. Um, it's a pretty clever way of structuring a song, but at the same time, it gets kind of obnoxious with how long it goes on. So I'm just gonna go over every pattern in this song one by one. Um, I am teaching this on all taps, um, but I will be explaining what you would do if you weren't playing this on all taps. Um, but songs like this really are just kind of meant to be played on all taps anyway, so, I mean, I won't tell anyone if that's what you do. <laughs> so the very first pattern, which you see 12 times, is just a bunch of triplets. Um, yeah, I mean, a bunch of ascending triplets like that are pretty common, you'll see them all the time, and there's, uh, it's not the most complicated thing to do. So there's two basic ways you can take care of this. So you can just try and one-hand it, you know, just go three, two, or three, four, five, and then just use that with one hand. Usually just holding down the yellow and then trying to use your other two fingers to uh, keep up with the blue and orange. But, um, I don't know, my hand just has a really hard time staying in rhythm doing that. Um, so what I would rather do is just hold it and then hit hit blue with this hand and then orange with the other hand. So just blue orange just tap it like that now if you are doing this without um, taps turned on then you might run into the issue because you do have to strum the first note of this you know usually if you're jumping into a tapping thing especially if it's like an alternating thing you usually want your tapping hand to be the number one hit so you'll be like one two one two one two one two your strumming hand is usually your main hand so that's the one you usually want to lead with um, however if your hand is down here to strum and you're missing that first tap so rather than being able to jump up and do one two one two one two like right away because this hand is has to strum the first one um you can do two two one two one two one two one two just kind of have this hand cover for your strumming hand for just that first section so then but then you can jump into the right um rhythm but let's move on to section two Yeah, again, um, this one's pretty easy too, it's just a lot of uh, five-way zigzags, and then, like I said, you're back to doing pattern one every time. Uh, but yeah, pattern two is... you see this kind of thing quite a lot in a lot of songs. There's really only one way to do this, honestly. Uh, you just slide your hand five, four, three, two, and then move over one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two. Yeah, you're, you're kind of just like having to dance your hand up and down the fretboard. I mean, technically, if you are able to tap it, you could just, like, hit orange with this and then go all the way down and tap orange. That I mean, I try to do stuff like that sometimes, but it's it's a little awkward. I wouldn't say that you're really better off doing something like that. All right, pattern three is where it gets a little bit more tricky, and I'm going to pause it as soon as I get to it. Okay, so when you first look at this, it looks really scary if you're not ready for it. Um... But once you learn to do it, it's one of the easier patterns, I would th I would say. So to start off right here, you look at the green, and that's your bass note. But then you're also going to be moving your bass note between green and red. So at the very start, you're just going to be holding green. You tap blue, and then you tap red. And then you move over to the red. You tap orange, tap yellow. Then move back over to the green. Tap blue, tap red. Um, yeah, it sounds complicated, but uh, just watch me play it. <laughs> Base note green, base note red, base note... Yeah, much harder to say while you're doing it, but yeah, you get the idea. Now over to pattern four. Yeah, so pattern four is just... Yeah, pattern four is just quads. Just goes 5, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's really kind of two ways of doing this with one hand. This is a pattern a lot of you probably ran into for the, for the first time on Raining Blood on Guitar Hero 3. So when it goes 5, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, there's the more straightforward way of doing it, which is, you know, have your four fingers doing 5, 4, 3, 2, and then move over, and then 4, 3, 2, 1. You know, that's kind of the more um, obvious way you might think of doing it. But a lot of times you'll kind of be caught off guard by this pattern, and your first instinct will be 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 3, 2, 1, 1. 
see what I'm saying? So like, it's kind of hard to move your whole hand back and forth. So you'll, a lot of people will just do like five, four, three, two, and then start the next blue with this finger and just go three, two, one, one. So then you're, you're only sliding your hand over on the last note. So yeah, you can do it like that. Hopefully you could uh, tell what's going on there. So let's move on to pattern five. Okay, pattern five is super easy. It's just the ascending quads, but it's much slower. So yeah, this one, just like the last one, you just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you just move your fingers up the fretboard. That one's pretty easy, you don't really need explaining. All right, now pattern six, this is actually something you see at the end of Through the Fire and Flames. So this one's pretty easy too. You just hold the red, go orange, blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, and you just kind of alternate, tap them. So yeah, this one's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a trill, but you know, alternate tapping is really the only option for this. And then you got pattern five. And then pattern four. Yeah, I don't know if you just saw what I just did there, but like I said, when you're caught off guard by that, you go five, four, three, two, three, two, one, one. Because, uh, yeah, your hand is in that place and you're not used to moving it over. Anyways, let's move on to pattern seven. We got 24 patterns to get through. <clears throat> All right, so pattern seven is just an ascending sweep. All right, so this is a pattern that you run into a lot in a lot of songs, too. So... The best way I would say of doing sweeps like this, where it's one, two, three, two, three, four, two, three, four, three, four, five. I would just do this first six notes in one position and then move over and do the other six notes in another position. And by that, I mean do one, two, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, three, four, and then two, three, four, three, four, five, two, three, four, three, four, five. So yeah, you're just kind of taking it in chunks of two chunks of three, making it a chunk of six and then do doing two chunks of six. that makes sense um so you could also i usually would only tap if it was descending but you could do something like you would go two three and then two three four two three four three four five two three so yeah you kind of just ascend your way up and it's not that difficult because you got four sets of three so you just so you would just go one two three four one two three four so then your hands stay doing the same thing but th this pattern is really not fast enough that you you really need to tap something like that. Even, well, even at full speed, this is a half speed. <laughs> so let's move on to number eight. I forget which patterns come when, so I just have to see it. All right, so pattern eight is, uh, yeah, another pretty straightforward trill. <clears throat> and um, this is another one that uh, this kind of applies that thing I was talking about before, how you strum the first note, have your fretting hand do the first two, and then do, so like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So yeah, because your strumming hand is down here for that first uh, hit on the trill, you'll just have to hit one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Because yeah, it, it's usually good to have your strumming hand on the downbeat. And since you're missing the first downbeat because it's down here, uh, you just have this one take over for just that one because let's say you strum but then you're on this hand going one two three four one two three four like maybe you could get used to that but I've usually found that throws me off a lot more um, I definitely prefer to have my strumming hand leading but yeah right here just alternate tap that one there's not very many other ways you can do something like that unless you just want to go watch my old trail video okay now on to pattern nine So pattern nine is kind of like a zigzag trill. So yeah, with trills, like the last pattern, you just hold the green and then you would just go five, 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 five. You know, it's pretty easy because you're just hitting the same note over and over again. But with this one, you're going four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three. And you're tapping it in that pattern. But you gotta remember, every other note is a, is a yellow. Well, every other tap note is a yellow. So you can kind of just reserve one hand or one finger on this hand and just take care of that. And just go four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three. 
you're using your tap hand right here to just go blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. So it goes blue, yellow, red, yellow, blue, red. Yeah, so you're just kind of alternating it in a different order. Now, pattern 10. Ooh, we got some chimneys. I know chimneys are one of the scariest things to a lot of people, but once I learned out the actual trick to doing them, they're super easy. So, if you know how to do a zigzag, then, and you know how to trill, then it's kind of just those two things combined. So, like, let's pretend that this was just a zigzag. It just went yellow, blue, orange, blue, yellow, blue, orange, blue, yellow, and it just went back and forth. So you would just hold your hand, like, right on the yellow, and, you know, you would just go up and down, and up and down. You know, you just do the zigzag. And the only way that this is different is that every time you go up and down, then you just throw in an extra tap. So, in this case, you go from yellow, blue, orange, blue, yellow, and then tap the orange. And then yellow, blue, orange, blue, yellow, and then tap the orange. So it's just zigzag, tap, zigzag, tap. And you just do that really fast. So, yeah, let me uh, set the A position. Yeah, it's just zigzag tap, zigzag tap. That's how chimneys go. <clears throat> Alright, now we're up to pattern 11. We're almost through these. And then after pattern 12, I'll play through all of them. Alright, so pattern 11 it just jumps around with a lot of trills. Now let's uh, get up close to it. Yeah, most patterns all revolve around the same concept. So, like, trills are a really common thing, just in all sorts of different forms. So, in this case, you would just hold the green, tap yellow, tap yellow, move over the red, tap blue, tap blue, move over the green, tap yellow, tap yellow. So, yeah, you're just moving your bass note and your tap note every four notes. So, let's set the A position and start over. This one is kind of hard. Yeah, I think the, the one I have the hardest time with is when it goes to the yellow and you gotta tap the blue. I don't know, because you're so used to having like gaps in between your fingers and all of them, and then all of a sudden you get two that are like right next to each other. So it just kind of throws you off. I feel like I do better at regular speed on some of these. Yeah, see, like, I can almost hit that just fine on regular speed. Alright, now we're on to pattern 12. Let's see how it looks. I forget what they all look like. <laughs> Alright, so pattern 12 is just a one-hander. You know, it's just go do your big zigzags, your four-way zigzags, or your five-way zigzags. Just sliding your hand up and down. So now I'm just going to play through the entire 12 patterns in a row. So from 12 all the way down to 1. And you can just kind of watch my hands if you need help uh, with any of them. Here's 12. Here's 11. Here's 10. There's 9. There's 8. There's 7. There's 6. There's 5. There's 4. Now let's do the 10 cluster Fs. Um, it's the exact same song, it's the same track, but it's just charted more difficult. So let's just go through the whole same process again of going through all of these patterns. <clears throat> A lot of them are pretty similar to the other one, but uh, they're just more difficult. So in the first one they start with the trills, this one starts with quads. So yeah, again, the same rules apply. Um, it's, uh, you can either, you can either just one hand it going two, three, four, five over and over again, or like maybe you could go two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. Sometimes I'll do quads like that, ascending quads, just like tap the last note. All right, moving on to number two. All right. 
right, so again, this is, um, so it goes 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, yeah. So, this one you're just going to have to get really good at one-handing. I mean, stuff like this, if you can figure it out, you might be able to tap it, but just do, like, big full-on sweeps with every hand. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's really fast, so... Let's see what it looks like at half speed, and we'll see. So yeah, it's uh, it's not complicated, it's just fast. So let's move on to section three. Oh, now we got some ladders. I have people requesting ladders all the time. And there's two reasons I haven't taught ladders before. One... There's not a lot of songs that have like a good just full-on section where I can go over it. It's it's mostly just like really short surprise parts. And two, I'm not super great at them myself. <laughs> so, but here's kind of what I do whenever I see ladders. Like usually they're tap notes. Well, hopefully. <laughs> but what I usually do is like, all right, so ladders, it goes 2-1, then 3-2, then 4-3, and then 5-4. I mean, they look really strange on the the board but uh, the way that i do it is i just put four fingers here and the other four fingers here so yeah they're just one note off and so i'll go like two one three two four three five four so yeah you're just going one two three four and one two three four but like at the same time so you would go two one three two two one three two four three five four so you're just going one two three four with both hands at the same time Let's set the A position. I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time. Let's go to half speed. So yeah, that, that way technically works a lot of the time. But man, it is hard to like get them to line up and get them to cooperate. Um, the way I've seen like professional players do it is like instead of seeing it as four groups of two, you know, like the 2-1 is a group and then the 3-2 is a group, they see it as like there's one note at the beginning and then it goes one three two four three five and then one note at the end or technically the one note at the end like that blue note going into the next red note to start the next chunk that's just its own next thing so rather than you know like i said doing the the two notes next to each other they're they're taking the two notes that are gapped next to each other so they'll tap the first red note and then just go green yellow and then red blue and then yellow orange and then blue red i mean technically if you can get that down that is a really efficient way of doing it because with this hand you're going red blue blue red red blue blue red red blue blue red and then with your fretting hand you're just going green yellow yellow orange green yellow yellow orange green yellow yellow orange so um and then if you have like backwards chimneys you kind of do it the same way so yeah, those are two extremely different ways of handling this section, both of which are really hard to get down, especially since patterns like this are so rare that you don't get much chance to practice. So let's see if I can... So yeah, you would probably just... You'd probably just leave one hand, this hand holding the... Uh, one, three, five buttons, and then the other hand handling blue and red. So yeah, you go one, three, three, five. One, three, three, five. You go one, three, two, four, three, five, four, two. So yeah, that's just a, a wild hand pattern you gotta get yourself used to, which I, I'll admit I'm not even prepared to even practice that. But I'll just stick to my uh, four-way button presses. <laughs> Technically, both of them are options. But let's move on to section four. Okay, so number four is a lot of descending quads, um, but they're all broken up. Again, there's a couple ways you can do this. Like, obviously, there's one hand just trying to, like, spam going five, four, three, two, one as much as you can, because when you got four notes, most of them involve the green and the orange. So you just go from five to one just as fast as you can and just ignore the little gaps in between. Then you could also, like, just try and, like, alternate tap through all of this. But it's really fast and really complicated and lots of gaps just make it really hard. The way that I would probably do this is just hold the green, do all of the orange notes with your tapping hand, 
and just go five four three two five four three two just do that uh, basically the same way you would if it was just going five four three two one just descending quints so let's set the a yeah, something like that If I can pick this up to regular speed, help while well, I can keep up with it. So yeah, like you you can just kind of spam that one if you really want. So let's move on to number five. All right, so five is exactly the same as the other one. It's really easy, so I don't really need to talk about that one. Okay, now six is pretty crazy, but it's not the most difficult on this song. So this one is just really fast descending triplets. Um, I would just hold the the red button and then just do five, four, three, four, three, two. In fact, you don't even have to hold the red, honestly. Like, I don't even hold the red. Um, I would even just hold the uh, green button for this. Let me see what I'm talking about. And then just sort of spam. So yeah, it's just kind of like, you got to get used to the, the whole, like, doing little sweeps of three notes. So you just go 5-4-3, 4-3-2, 5-4-3, 4-3-2, but, you know, as fast as you can to keep up with that. Um, yeah, like I said, you can hold down the red as a bass note and then just go, like, 4-3-2, but I, I don't know. I kind of just like doing the sweep of three rather than just holding one and doing a sweep of two like that. I don't know. It's, it's just easier for me. I don't know. Do it how you want. Now let's get into pattern seven. <clears throat> okay, so pattern seven looks like, again, it's just ascending quads. It's really fast. Yeah, again, I would just say use your four fingers like this, move them back and forth, and go up the, the fretboard. And let's move on to section eight. I mean, I may not be good enough to perfect these, but I can at least explain them. <laughs> so this one is very similar to the the patterns version, but instead of just holding the green and tapping these, you're just you're moving the bass note with it. So yeah, you would just hold yellow, do four taps of orange, hold the red, do four taps of blue. So Yeah, that one's uh, not too bad. Let's move on to number nine. Okay, number nine is really weird. It, it, I would call this like an X pattern because you've got notes coming in from orange and green and then blue and then red and then the yellow and then back outwards and it just it does does that. It's it looks really scary when you first see it. Um, patterns like this play a lot of mind games because they're there's so many different ways you could do this. You could just like move, you could just take care of like green and red with this hand and then go over and just do like five, four, three, four, five, four, three, four, five. And then just like have two things going on in your mind at the same time, just like <laughs> multitasking it. Um, another way you could look at this is like just do one, two, three, two, one. And then just have this hand going five, four, four, five, five, four, four, five. So, it's kind of weird. Uh, I'll probably go over this quite a few times. But, yeah, when it's this fast, it's really hard to comprehend what's going on. I had one method that was working for a little while. Yeah, it's... It plays a lot of mind games on you. But uh, the way I would probably do it is just to like move between green and red with this hand and then do five, four, three, four, five. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain this one. Now, that's, that's one of the most difficult to explain, but not as difficult as number 11. <laughs> number 10. Um, number 10 is exactly the same on patterns and uh, clusters. It's just the chimneys again, you know, tap, zigzag, tap, zigzag, tap. So yeah, if you can get that down, then you've got it on both. Now, number 11, I have no idea what's going on in this one. So let's get All right, so number 
right, so this one is like some reverse chimneys and then some other zigzags and some chimneys. Uh, a lot of it is just like, this is one you'll probably have to break down and play in slow motion and just learn the pattern because this is a very unusual pattern in general. So to do reverse chimneys is pretty different than doing regular chimneys uh, because like you go three, two, one, two, three, one, and then four, three, two, three, four, and then two. And then all of a sudden you're into regular chimneys and yeah, it's it's like switching back and forth. But with these reverse chimneys, the best way I would do it is just to hold the green. Like let's pretend it was just going three, two, one, two, three, one, three, two, one, two, three, one. You know, it, like just continue that same pattern. The best way to do that. So with regular chimneys, it's zigzag tap, zigzag tap. With this one, it's like you go three, two, and then two, three, and then three, two, and then two, three, because you're doing three, two and then goes back to green for the one. And then two, three, one, three, two, one, three. And then there we go. So let's try slowing this way down for this pattern. Oh man, I should have marked this location. Did there but it, it's just a whole lot of zigzagging and tapping and yeah so basically you got to know how to do zigzags chimneys and reverse chimneys and then just kind of do all of those things at once wherever you're, it shows <laughs> that's the best way i can explain that i mean if you're good enough to fc the song you're probably not watching my guitar hero lesson but let's go to full speed okay so number 12 is just another set of like sweeping up and down. So now let's play through this whole song for the all 12 patterns. Number 12. There's number 11. Here's number 10. But there you go. There's my uh, there's my Christmas video for the year. Uh, this is like the third video I've put up on this channel in the last year. Three videos ago was my 1,000 subscriber special, and then now I'm like at 2,000 with like not doing anything all year. But <laughs> anyways, hope you learned something. Uh, these songs are pretty good to practice on. Um, here, let me show you. Uh, the name is. Schmutz 06, that's the name of the charter. So just look up Schmutz's um, playlists and it's pretty easy to find. Just like, he has a lot of really fun songs to just practice tapping on. But uh, that's all. <laughs>